Hey, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, we're going to create a compound interest calculator using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. This will be more of an exercise for beginners. So why don't you go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's get started, everybody. We will add all of our HTML elements first, followed by CSS styling, then add JavaScript functionality at the end. So within our HTML file, let's begin with an H1 heading. My heading will be interest calculator. After this H1 element, I will create a form element. The form element will consist of three labels and three input elements. So let's create a label. This label will be for the principal amount. How much are we depositing initially or borrowing if it's a loan? I think I spelled principal right. I sometimes mix up principal with principal. Then we will need an input element to enter in a number. I will set the type equal to be number. The ID will be principal. With this label, we will set the for attribute to be principal. We're doing this so that if we click on this label, we'll select the input element. We should only be able to enter in numbers. We can't normally type in any text. All right, let's copy this label and this input element, paste it two additional times. The second label will have text of interest rate. The for attribute will be rate. The ID will be rate. The third label will have text of years. After how many years has interest accrued? The for attribute will be years. The ID will be years. Then we'll add a button. We need a button element. The button will say submit. This button will have an on click attribute, not on lick, on click, equal to a JavaScript function, which we still need to declare. We will create a calculate function within JavaScript. We'll do that later though. At the bottom, we'll display a total. I will use a paragraph element to do this. The ID of this paragraph element will be total. I will add the text of total. Within this paragraph element, after my text of total, I will include a span element that has an ID of total dash amount. This will display a dollar amount or some other unit of currency of your choosing. For the time being, I'll add a placeholder of zero dollars and zero cents. I'm using a span element just because we're going to style the dollar amount different from the text of total. All right, that is all the HTML elements we'll need. Let's head to our CSS style sheet and I will zoom back to 100%. Let's select the body of our document, pick a font family. I will pick a sans serif font. Arial is pretty good. I'll add a backup of sans serif in case we can't display Arial. I will change the background color of our page to be something light gray, but I like using HSL values. Uh, let's set the lightness to be like 95%. Okay, not bad. The form itself will be a different color. Let's select our H1 element. I will change the font color. Pick a color. I'll set the lightness to be 30% for the H1 element. I'll increase the font size to be 3EM, then text align center. Next, I will select the form element that contains all of our labels and input elements. I will change the background color to be white. I will set a max width of 350 pixels. Margin auto to center it. I'll add a little bit of padding, 25 pixels, add a border radius to smooth the corners. Uh, let's go with 10 pixels. I'll add a box shadow, box dash shadow, 
5 pixels by 5 pixels, and a blur of 10 pixels. I'm going to lower the alpha on this box shadow. So to do that, you can select a color. Let's use HSL. And I'm just going to lower the alpha to 30%. Alpha is very similar to opacity. For the elements within our form, I'm going to use Flexbox to order them. Display Flex. I will set the Flex direction to be a column. Then Align Item Center. Let's style the labels next. That would be the text of Principal Amount, Interest Rate, and Years. We will select all labels. Increase the font size to EM. And I will set the font weight to be bold. Let's select the input elements next. Input. Set the width to be 50%. Text align center. That will center the numbers within the input elements. I'll increase the font size to 2EM. I'll add a border. Two pixels solid. But I'll change the color. I'll set the lightness to 90%. Add a border radius to round the corners. Five pixels. Add a little bit of margin to the top. Five pixels. Then margin, bottom, 15 pixels. All right, let's style our button next. We are selecting our button. I will change the background color to something green. I'll set the lightness to 40%. Change the font color to be white. Increase the font size. 1.5 EM. Remove the border. Border, none. Border radius to smooth the corners, 5 pixels, add some padding, 10 pixels by 15 pixels, then change our cursor to be a pointer if we hover over the button. Using the hover pseudo class, let's change the background color when we hover over the button. We are selecting the button, then select the hover pseudo class. We'll change the background color to have a lightness that's 10% darker. I'm going to use 30%. And that does appear to work. Then we need to style the total and the total amount. So these have IDs. We will select the ID of total. Hashtag total. I will increase the font size, and that's it, to be 2EM. Then with that span, this has an ID of total amount. Select the ID of total amount. I will change the color to be green. Color, green, but I'll pick something more specific. I will set the lightness to be like 35%. And to make the font weight bold. Font, weight, bold. All right, that is not a bad looking form. But now we need to add some functionality, so let's do that. So within our HTML file, the button has an onclick attribute set equal to this JavaScript function, but we haven't defined that function yet, so let's do that now. We will create a function named calculate. So within our JavaScript file, we will create a function to calculate. At the top of this function, we will create some constants for these input elements and the total amount. We'll have const total amount equals document dot get element by ID. The ID that we're getting is 
total dash amount. Okay, let's copy this line, paste it. We're going to get the ID of this input element for the principal amount. That had an ID of principal. This constant will be named principal input. Let's get the interest rate. That had an ID of rate, rate input, then years. The ID was years. This constant will be named years input. We're going to get the values within each of these number text boxes. Let principal for the principal amount equals take our principal input, access its value, then store it within this variable so that we can work with it. Let rate equals the rate input's value. But we want this to be a percentage. We'll divide this value by 100. If somebody were to enter in like 2, dividing it by 100 would give us 0 0.02, meaning 2%. And then let years equals our years input access the value. Normally with these input elements, we can only type in numbers. Right now I'm trying to type in some text, but it's not letting me. There are ways to circumvent this. For example, if I were to right click, go to inspect, Within my form, within this first number input element, this input has a type and number, but I can easily change that to be text. And now I can type in some text. Just as an extra precaution, I'm going to enclose these values with a number cast. So we'll cast them to be numbers. Here's the formula to calculate interest. We will have a const result equals, we will take our principal amount, that would be the initial amount, use the power method of math. This will be the base. We'll need a set of parentheses. One plus our rate divided by one. To the power, we'll need a comma, one times the amount of years. And that is the formula we'll need. So to test everything, let's take our constant of total amount, change the text content to equal the result. If I were to deposit $1,000 in the bank, maybe the bank has an interest rate of 1% after one year. Oh, that's strange. All right, one thing we're gonna add to our button we're going to set the type attribute equal to be button. And that should fix that. Okay, so we deposit $1,000 with an interest rate of 1, 1%. After one year, we'll have $1,010. But we're going to format this currency. With our result, we will use the built-in to locale string method. The first argument is going to be a location, a locale. Depending on which geographic location a user is viewing this page, we format numbers differently. To use the user's default, the first argument will be undefined. The second argument is an object of options. We can set the style property, and to make this more readable, I'm going to put this on a new line so we can see it. I will set the style to be currency. The next property that will be the currency. Pick a type of currency. I'll use USD for American dollars. All right, let's try this again. I will deposit $1,000 with an interest rate of 1, meaning 1%. After one year, I should have $1,010. With an interest rate of 2, that would give me $20. After two years, that would give me $1,040.40. If I were to set the principal amount to be $10,001 with a 2% interest rate after two years, that would give me $10,405.04. Only problem with this is that what if somebody types in negative numbers? 
We would like to prevent that, or at least add some sort of check. So before we calculate the result, we'll add a few if statements. Let's check to see if, if our principal is less than zero, then we will set the principal to equal zero. Let's do this with the rate. If the rate is less than zero, set the rate equal to zero so we don't get negative numbers. Then years. If years is less than zero, set years to equal zero. So if I type in negative numbers like negative $1,000 with a negative 1% interest rate after negative two years, it'll at least give me zero instead of some negative number. What if somebody circumvents our precaution where we only accept numbers? For example, I'm going to inspect, go to the type, set that equal to be text. I will set the principal amount to be pizza with a 10% interest rate after 10 years. Well, we end up with not a number. So within our if statements, let's use the or logical operator or if our principal is not a number, is not a number. We'll set it equal to zero. Or if rate is not a number, set the rate equal to zero. Or if years is not a number, set it equal to zero set the principal amount to be a word like pizza with a 10% interest rate after 10 years. We're at least given zero instead of not a number. Even better yet, after submitting, if a number isn't valid, like the word pizza, let's reset that to be zero. When we're checking our principal within this if statement, let's set the principal inputs value to equal zero. Let's do this with the rate the value of the rate input will equal zero. And the same thing with years. Years input, access the value, set it equal to zero. Let's try this again. Gonna go to inspect, set the type to be text. I'll do this with rate and years as well. Pizza. Pizza, pizza, submit. And what am I missing? I just realized I had a typo here. Make sure that the N in NAN is capital. Even if I were to enter in some text, like the word pizza, they'll all at least reset to be zero. And then we'll calculate what the interest rate is as if they were all zero. Instead of getting, you know, not a number. All right, everybody, so that was a compound interest calculator that you can write using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript.